John Martins. I am a developer advocate at Autodesk. And most of the time I've talked about APS and the APIs from Autodesk Platform Services. You might be familiar if you see the our APIs for a long time, you might see be familiar with the name Forge. Uh, just know that it is the same uh, APIs, Forge and APS. APS is just a new name to make uh, certify that uh, it is a part of the Autodesk uh, platform, the Autodesk familiar, uh, family of uh, software and uh, services. All right. So I'll go through a quick overview over APS, and then I'll ask you to, uh, to fulfill a few prerequisites. And with that, we'll have a deep dive in design automation. This is the, the workflow for this uh, class that we'll have today. We'll go through the main concepts and uh, I hope that after this, you'll have a, a better idea on how to take advantage of this service and how to use that for your uh, AEC workflows, right? Before going further, it's always good to emphasize, to explain uh, what is what exactly is Autodesk Platform Services. Uh, you might be familiar with Autodesk from our products such as Revit, AutoCAD, all of these, uh, these desktop products, desktop software, they have their own APIs. APIs. Uh, and nowadays we also have our cloud products such as the Autodesk Construction Cloud, Fusion Team, for those familiar uh, also with Pin360, the legacy product. These products, they are built on top of a, a set of services, a set of cloud services. And what makes these products possible, what enables these workflows, the, 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 the group of these services are uh, built on top of this platform called Autodesk Platform Services, right? So through this, uh, you, you can access these, uh, these services either through the product or through the APIs itself. And that's what we are going to do today. To take advantage of uh, these services, these APIs, all of those are RESTful APIs. And you can take advantage of those uh, using any stack uh, of your preference. Uh, usually one web application built using APS is going to build on top, uh, is built on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript codes. But you can also uh, take advantage of any framework available such as React, Node.js, Angular, .NET. I use .NET a lot of time and any other that's not listed here. Uh, if you do a lot of work with, with Python, if you build your Python scripts and you're familiar with Python, you can build an entire web application using uh, only Python and these three uh, components here, these three uh, technologies here. Anything's possible and we are going to see in details uh, specifically how to connect with a uh, RESTful API in this uh, in the context of this uh, this class. We are going to see in details how is the response, how we make a request to use one source, and how is the response that we are receiving, all right? Together with APIs, there are a large amount of APIs uh, we have APIs to host designs, to render designs in the browser, to translate designs, take advantage of uh, geometries, textures, metadata, such as the, the properties of our designs. All of that is, is possible. Uh, and we have those APIs that are most common and those that are uh, uh, for depending on the workflow. And those are there are uh, the most uh, complex, require uh, more knowledge. On the, on the tools that you are going to use. Usually when you talk about uh, an APS application, uh, an app using Autodesk Platform Services APIs, we'll talk about, uh, we'll have the common workflow of someone uploading a design or connecting with a design hosted in, in our cloud uh, environment, and then grabbing those information, rendering in a, in a custom application. This is possible with, uh, uh, with what we call our, our core APIs, uh, model derivative, data management, and, and, and viewer. And yeah, most of the, the, the samples are built on top of that. Today, we'll focus on uh, another, uh, another context, another workflow, when you want to modify your designs or perform any uh, activity uh, in batch against multiple Revit designs, right? Before going further with the presentation, I'd like to share with you 
how it looks uh, for how is it is the look of a common uh, app built on top of APS. You can have your designs uh, hosted in a in a bucket in a storage. We'll go in details on each of these uh, each of these terminologies in, in this session. Don't worry about that, but just know that uh, you'll usually take advantage of one design, store it in the cloud, then we do a translation. After this translation, we are able to uh, render this design in a web application, all right? In a in a web in, in, in a using a browser to take advantage of all of these assets. And the great advantage of that is that by doing this way, going through this workflow, there's no need anymore for the, the license, for the, the desktop to take advantage of this information. I have access to the geometry, geometric information. I have access to, to the textures, to how my, my design can be seen. And I can also take advantage of the, the properties, the metadata. If I select this, uh, this wall, for instance, and I click right here under properties, I can see all of these uh, parameters. Another good way, another good possibility with these web applications is uh, uh, another good, great part of these uh, web applications is that it, they are fully customizable. So I can control the size of these, uh, the screen, the size of these, the scene containing my, my design. I can control uh, how my geometries are going to behave, how the, the click of the user is going to behave. I could attach these uh, to this design uh, issues. I could attach problems. I could attach, uh, attach uh, markups. I could do basically anything possible. And another great part is that it is really easy with APS. APS through viewer library that uh, makes it possible to render designs in the cloud. Uh, it comes with uh, a subset of, of tools by default. So you can, uh, for, instance, for example, take advantage of this measurement tool to take measurements on your designs. Uh, another cool extension is this uh, first person right here. For any supported design, you can use this extension to uh, walk in your design, in your project with a first person, first person view, point of view. This looks like uh, a gaming, but look, looks like gamification of your design is always useful also for meetings. You can you could put a lot of people uh, analyzing this project through this uh, extension. Let me get away from that. And if that's not enough, you can always uh, create your own extensions. Uh, here we have a few example of extensions built by our developer advocacy and support team. For instance, we have this one integrating with Google Maps. And this one is going to grab this uh, geolocation information from this design uh, and place this bounding box uh, containing this design uh, on top of uh, a map, on top of our uh, the, the current location for the, the current uh, site location for this project. And if we scroll down, scroll, uh, if you, we zoom, zoom in, we can see uh, the exact place where this uh, project is going to be built, all right? I believe this is a random place, but uh, the idea is that you can do that with any design since our designs are uh, geolocated, right? You could also add point clouds to this in, in, the, in the browser, add a phasing extension. You could control how these geometries are going to, to behave. You can change the colors, you can change uh, the position of these uh, these uh, geometries. Each of these elements could be uh, moved around. And this is where we are going to talk about the, the next uh, step for uh, that we cover in this uh, session. Every time we are rendering a design, we are always rendering the translation from one input file. And this is good for uh, Retrieving data, retrieving information, and check how it's going to, to, to look like with a modification. But if you want to make any modification persistent, if you want, for instance, change the family of this wall, uh, change a system of one specific element, 
for any of any modification necessary, we need to go through a different service that is not covered in, in this uh, application. This service is design automation, and this is the goal of our tutorial, all right? Before going further, let me also share with you our getting started. We have this getting started with our tutorials on how to make one simple app to build our designs, how to make a simple app to build designs hosted in Bing 360 or ACC, uh, how to create extensions for your designs, and also one for design automation. This is not the one we are going to do today. If you have any interest on any of these uh, applications, any of these uh, tutorial apps, we have recorded sessions on YouTube and also this tutorial contains a, a lot of step-by-step -step today for, for this, all right? Today, we'll focus entirely on design automation, just using the Postman or Insomnia. And for that, uh, we'll go through this tutorial right here. If you go over design automation, that is a step-by-step -step tutorial, and we'll focus on design automation for Revit, all right? Before going there, before going further, there are a few prerequisites that I need you to ensure that you take care of. So right now, first of all, to, to uh, follow the same steps that I'll do in, in this course, in these next hours, I need you to have an APS account and one APS credential. Once you have that, we'll also, uh, I'll also need you to have one of these options here. Uh, we'll use Insomnia. You can uh, use either Insomnia or Postman. I have both of the, them here, both of those these options here available, installed with the the the, the required uh, collections. So feel free to choose any of those. I'll I'll say to try to go with Postman first. If you already have Insomnia and if you're already familiar with Insomnia, uh, like me, for instance you can uh, go with Insomnia and I can send you the, the collection. But the, the tutorial itself is entirely focused on Postman, right? So let me show you what you need to do right now. First step is the APS uh, account and the APS app. To take advantage of your APS account, you first of all will need a uh, Autodesk account. If you don't have an Autodesk account, create one Autodesk account. You can use uh, any Gmail uh, account that you have to just create one. And after that, you can just go to this uh, page right here, aps.autodesk.com, APS mini uh, Autodesk platform services. And then you're going to click on this option right here to log in. I already logged in. Once you log in for the first time, you'll, be, uh, you'll have access to a trial account. And with a trial account, you have 90 days to test all of our APIs, all of our features. You have uh, enough credits to test uh, applications and APIs such as the one we are going to use today, right? We are going to use mostly design automation and depending on your workflow, if you want to check your designs in the browser, you're also going to use uh, model derivative. Once you do that, I just ask you to go over applications and then create one application, all right? Since we have a, a not a, a small crowd today, I can go on and ask you, uh, do you have already uh, an Autodesk account? Can you, I'll ask you to please reply yes or not in the chat window. So I have an idea. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so you all have Autodesk accounts. So now we need a, a, an APS application to take advantage of this tutorial. You can pick any of these options right here. 
the main difference of these types is that this one only works uh is more suitable for when you have a desktop application mobile application anything uh, any any workflow where you can't share your secrets with your uh customer with your end user this one is when you want to connect servers to server you don't want to use uh what we call a three-legged authentication and this one is the most flexible one that it can be used for any workflow. For this, this reason, uh, let's use this first option here, traditional web app. And as a name, I'm gonna call it AC test AC tech 2023. Okay, let me create this app. And once you create an app, you'll have access to one client ID and one client secret. This is what we are going to use on our requests, on our uh, workflows, all right? This is the credentials that uh, lets us use our, uh, our services. Every time you use a service, you want to pass what we call a, a authorization, and this authorization relies on that. We'll focus on that in the, in, in the next session after we fulfill the, the prerequisites. Here we have the name of our app and description. Feel free to, to add a description for that. The application type, we selected a traditional web app, most flexible one, flexible one, grant type, authorization, callback URL. You don't need to, to change that. We are not uh, addressing this in the, the, call, the callback URL in this tutorial. Uh, we have other tutorials focusing on, on connecting with hubs for these workflows. Is we will always need a callback, but not today, so don't worry about that. And here we have the API access. This will control which services, which APIs this app through these credentials can use. So by default, they always come with all of the, the options enabled. It means that with this app, with these credentials, you could uh, connect with ACC, uh, Bing 360, data management, design automation that we're going to use today, model derivative, and so on. Today, we'll use mostly data management, model derivative, and design automation. So, but for simplicity, you can leave it like that with all the options enabled. Moving to production, or uh, if you have a paid account and you're just testing this workflow, you can always limit to only these options right here. Moving to production, I could limit to only use data management, design automation, and model derivative. But since we are still developing, still testing the API, you can just create that with all of the options enabled. All right, and right here at the very bottom, we'll have uh, the last option. This was added uh, recently on our platform. Uh, now we have the option to collaborate and even transfer the ownership of our apps. So by clicking this button, I could collaborate this app with any uh, anyone in my team. And I could uh, add this collaboration with two types of uh, permissions. Just to view this app or also to make changes. Changes in the callback, changes in the API access, name, description, and even uh, to regenerate this uh, client secret, all right? Uh, this is useful in a workflow where you work in your company and you have a team of, let's say, five uh, developers. So instead of creating one account using your alias, your email, uh, your address, you could uh, have an alias like aps.dev at yourcompany.com and then uh, you create an app, you create your account with this alias and add each of your developers, developers as collaborators on your apps. It is also useful if you want to uh, develop a plugin, develop an extension, and then uh, your customer your customer is going to own the, the source codes after your development. So you just develop everything, develop your plugin. Uh, we are going to see uh, how it works, where the, those uh, stuff are stored. Uh, and then after development, you just uh, transfer the ownership to your customer and he owns all of your, your source 
for the, the activities and bundles and all of this information related to uh, design automation, right? Once you take care of that, I'll need you to download either Insomnia or Postman. If you wanna go with Insomnia, just go through this link. Let me share through the chat window. Insomnia. And then you click in download. In this case, it is for Mac, since I'm, I'm on a Mac. And if you wanna go with Postman, this is the link. And you can just uh, download it, uh, Postman. This is what we're going to do, to use on our tutorial. And let me explain the differences. Uh, the differences are most mainly on the interface, in the interface. This is Insomnia interface, as, as you can see, and this is our tutorial for today. As you can see, I use Insomnia a lot. I have a lot of collections. So uh, I prefer Insomnia, but for today's tutorial, uh, this tutorial is focused, is based on top of uh, Postman collections. These Postman collections work in some way for insomnia, uh, I did some uh, preparation for, I, I created a, a, an insomnia collection based on, on this one for tutorial. So what I'm trying to say is if you want to be uh, just to, to have your workflow, just like the tutorial, go with Postman. Also, if you are familiar with Postman, we have this Postman collection, also uh, environments. If you are familiar with Insomnia, don't worry, you don't need to download. I can share this with you. And each step, each step is going to be basically the same. This is how uh, one uh, request looks like in post in Insomnia. We have the, the form, all of the information and the response. And this is how it looks like in Postman. Uh, we have all of the information, the body and the response. As you can see, is the same stuff, same information. It's just the interface that is is, is different, and the way to to automate some tasks and to uh, create your workflows. All right. So feel free, pick uh, any option, and yeah. Once you have that, we can start talking about design automation and going through all of these tasks right here. We have eight tasks, and after that. Uh, depending on the time you have, I can uh, share additional resources regarding design automation. We can, can do an interactive task to uh, connect with an uh, external environment, with an external URL from within the design automation job. But yeah, that will depend on how fast we can fulfill this, uh, these first eight tasks here. All right. What I will ask from you right now is to share through the chat window which one you're going to use, Insomnia or Postman. Postman, 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 okay. Anyone else? Insomnia, anyone? Postman? Oh, all right. Thank you, Fernando. You have a little... Yeah, people usually have more experience with Postman. It is more popular. I Sometimes I think I'm the only one using Insomnia. <laughs> but I, I kind of like this uh, interface. I, I like it. I, I, I feel it is very friendly. Okay, so... LSM, everybody will use Postman. So anyone needs to download it. No. 
Do you need some time to download Insomnia? Anyone need some time? No, so I assume everybody have insomnia. Good to go. Thank you, Benjamin. Oh, awesome. Was really fast. <laughs> okay, so let's take like three minutes, should be enough. And just download insomnia. And once we ensure everybody has insomnia, we can start the design automation. Three minutes from now and yeah it's good to drink some water also <laughs> see okay so let's go back to presentation uh, before going through the code going through the tutorial we need to uh to have a, a good understanding on the terminologies and on the api on the service itself i'm going to see it's going to be a lot if you are checking, uh, if you are learning about design automation for the first time, uh, try to be uh, really go through step by step, cover everything. If you have any question, please just read through 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 chat, and we are going to address here. This is the the good thing about having a smaller crowd, small a small amount, smaller amount of people. So yeah, take advantage of that. So we all. Uh, and this uh, this session with a great understanding of what design automation is capable of. All right. First of all, let's have uh, an overview. Design automation is, is the API that is going to allow you to access the automation capabilities of the Autodesk core products. We'll talk about a lot about Revit. Just know that just like we can take advantage of Revit API in these workflows, we can also take advantage of uh, AutoCAD, Civil 3D API, uh, Inventor API, and 3ds Max API using these same workflows. Design automation is used uh, in workflow where, where you have any task that you can automate on your desktop application. Uh, the main difference is that now you can do that in, in the cloud uh, using the scalability that only a cloud solution can offer. You don't need a, a, a license for the software that you're going to use. Uh, the execution is is a lot faster. We have a, a great computer, and uh, this execution is is done without the interface components. So if you compare with a local plugin that you have, that you might have, or any plugin that you might have used before, uh, the usual work workflow is you have a one input file. You then need to open Revit. Uh, open this input file, uh, select the, the plugin, run this plugin, and then you can save the file and close Revit and all of that. Design automation is going to simply uh, pick one file uh, from it, as long as they, it, this file is available in the cloud, in any cloud storage, process that against your plugin without the interface, uh, the opening uh, time the time for opening Revit is really, really, really short, really small. You're going to see uh, that it takes seconds to, to open Revit and run the, the item itself. And the great advantage is that instead of doing it file by file, you can do in batch with hundreds of files at the same time, right? So if you want to upgrade multiple designs, extract information from designs, uh, change one family, change one uh, one item from multiple designs where you don't have to necessarily pick uh, options, pick uh, elements. These, uh, all, any of these workflows are a good fit for design automation, right? And yeah, since it is a, a web services, you can also connect with your business systems. We have a new feature called uh, Open Networks that allows you to connect uh, your job on this instance in, uh, in the cloud with your API. Let's say you have an API with your uh, prices information for elements, for materials. Let's say you have your own database with uh, embodied, embodied carbon data for each of the materials. 
you can connect that with your uh, job running on top of design automation, right? This is just to have an idea of the, the engines available, uh, AutoCAD, 3DS Max, uh, Inventor, and Revit. And for each of these engines, you have the full power of the, the complete API, except for the user interface part. So since now we are focusing on Revit engine, it means that uh, any sub file supported by the Revit API can be supported through uh, design automation. It means that uh, since Revit can open IFC files, you can use design automation uh, through the Revit engine to open and to process uh, IFC files. Uh, first thing you, you need to do is uh, open this IFC file, import it as a Revit file, then you can use the, the Revit uh, API on top of that. Later, if you still need to generate an IFC, you can just export that back to IFC format and then host it anywhere in the cloud. Uh, it does, it does, you don't need to be hosted on the ACC or Bing 360 or uh, even our buckets. It can be stored anywhere. It's just going to be processed on our cloud, right? No question so far. No question so far. Okay. So we also have this uh, diagram right here to make it clear that this design automation API, it's not going, going to expose directly the API of the product. Uh, two things, those two uh, steps are separated. And we're going to see that in a lot of details in, in the next uh, phase of our, our tutorial. Basically, what you see here uh, inside this green, uh, let's use the Revit server. Inside this green uh, rectangle here is what happens inside our instance. So what everything inside that is not using directly any uh, design automation endpoints. What we have here is the Revit server with the Revit engine, Revit core console. And this Revit core console is going to run Revit engine without uh, any interface because there is no one to, to show, to render a design. There is no point uh, on, on re rendering any design, any geometry, any information. We just need the data to access the data. This Revit uh, core engine uh, can take advantage of the Revit API. Uh, so your code, your plugin, your logic to perform any, any task on top of Revit API is going to use this core, this core console against the file that you specify it as an input. It's going to process that and uh, generate one output file or connect with your external database with your external, uh, your custom API, all right? Design automation API, which is part of Autodesk platform services uh, that can be accessed, used through a uh, RESTful uh, endpoints through, uh, as a RESTful API through RESTful calls, it's only going to uh, start this job. It's going to take care of uploading the data, uh, configuring, the, configuring the data, and also uh, start one execution. After that, after the design automation API uh, controls the, the, the start, the beginning of the process, is going to control mostly the process. Your code that is hosted in the cloud will take care of using the, the API against your product, your input file on top of this uh, sandbox instance, all right? So once you, you get familiar with the concepts of design automation API, those can be used to perform any tasks on any supported engine. Uh, you get familiar with the terminology of activities, bundles, uh, work items, uh, engines, all of that, uh, all of these endpoints, they are the same. They behave the same way for any of the engines. Uh, we are going to address that for Revit today, but it is going to be the same for if you want to connect with AutoCAD or Inventor. The only difference is on your app bundle, on your logic, on your plugin. Uh, you are going to say, uh, for instance, uh, I need this an input file to be processed against uh, this engine using this uh, app bundle, using this plugin logic. So this part 
when we go inside this plugin logic, this is what where we have a difference. If we're talking about Revit, we are going to use the Revit API and build the plugin using a uh, .NET, uh, .NET framework. For AutoCAD, same stuff, this time using uh, AutoCAD API. For Inventor, same stuff, this time use Inventor uh, API, all right? But design automation part is always the same, is what's going to manage all of this execution, all right? No question so far, no question. So let's see one example of workflow uh, against uh, a job, uh, a usual job with uh, design automation. You have your APS uh, code, which we, it's going to be our, your plugin, your app bundle code, and you'll have also your uh, design data, your source, your input file. Once you have all of that, you're going to send this to a process using design automation API. So it's going to have that sandbox, that folder, uh, that instance running uh, one of these engines against your input file, processing your file. It can be used to extract information, to modify one family, anything uh, supported. And after its execution, it's going to generate your results. Your results can be a JSON file. We have a case where it export uh, data from Revit to a JSON file. You can have a uh, derivative output for Revit. We, we can uh, export views as PDFs. We can export uh, the entire model as a, 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 in IFC format. You can also uh, modify more Revit design, changing some families and generating a new uh, Revit file. All of that's possible depending on what's supported by the API that you're going to use. Another uh, information, another process, part of this process that needs to be clear is that when you run your job, everything is run uh, in the cloud. So your files need to be accessible in the cloud. The, let's say uh, the first step to, to be able to process designs using design automation is make your data available in the cloud. And it can be uh, available in any uh, provider. You can use Azure, Google, Dropbox, AWS, so any, any cloud provider can uh, be used to store your designs. You don't need to uh, store those designs on uh, APS, on your APS buckets or with ACC or Bing 360. Uh, anything work here. All you need to do is uh, send links to the design automation service in order for this service to be able to download this design. Uh, we do that usually through what we call signed URLs. Signed URLs are short uh, URLs, short uh, URLs that are, are valid for a short period that you can take advantage to download data or upload data. Let's say you start a design in Azure or, or Google Drive, for instance. You can generate a signed URL. With the signed URL, you just pass it as an input for the design automation instance. Design automation, as soon as they start, it's going to use this uh this download this URL that you specify it to download the input. Once the input is in the instance, uh, it's going to grab your code, your logic, and process against this this file, this input file. After that, it's going to generate a, 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 an output file, the resulting of this execution, and then place it, upload it where also once more you specify. It can be on top of APS. It can be on uh, Azure, Google, any anywhere, any cloud storage uh, that you are that you uh, need to use. What is more important also is that we are not going to store uh, either the output or the input. So once the the input is downloaded and the output is generated, they are only going to be available while your code is still running. After the end of your execution, end of the execution of your code, both of these files are going to be discarded. We are not going to store anything that you process using design automation. Uh, it, it, both the input and output are only going to be available where you specify uh, the, the output, the signed URLs to store, right? Now that we are familiar with the workflow, any, any questions on the workflow? Oh, there is a question here. 
make data available in the cloud. Data meaning the script file or Revit document, both. Uh, we are going to see after this the presentation, when you we deep dive into the, the sample, we are going to see how we make the, 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 the script file uh, available in cloud. But both of those need to be in, in the cloud. The script file is going to be stored as this app bundle right here. In the input file, the app bundle needs to be stored with your uh, APS app. It's going to be stored on uh, APS backend. But your uh, input file, your Revit file, can be stored anywhere. All right? So let's talk about some terminology. To run a job, you need to specify, first of all, one engine. So the engine will be any of these options available, AutoCAD, Inventor, Revit, or 3ds Max. And we, for each engine, we have a subset of versions that you can use. So I can run a job against using Revit Engine 2024. I can run a job using AutoCAD uh, from 2022. So you have the freedom of, to select any uh, version between uh, among the, the available ones to run your jobs. And this is going to is going to control your, the behavior of your workflow. This is important because uh, Revit, for instance, it can't open uh, later formats. So if your team, if your customer, if your user is making his projects using Revit 2022, you need to use the same engine to process any job. If you run uh, their input files on top of Revit 2023 design, once it saves your this data, it is going to save a file that your customer can't open because your customer is, is using Revit 2022. So this is going this engine is going to be used to open the design and also to save it. So make sure that you are using the correct version uh, that is uh, compatible with what your users what your customers can uh, can uh, open later on, all right? There's another question here. Is it possible to create interactive apps? It seems that it is, this is geared towards batch processing. Yes, Benjamin, you can. Uh, after this tutorial, after this step-by-step, uh, -step, I am going to share, I can share with you one sample of uh, one inter interactive app. Uh, we just have a limitation on the interactivity since because since uh, this job is going to grab a, an input file process and upload it, you cannot have an interactivity like uh, someone making small changes and then you quickly process and generate the result to the end user. So this is not possible with design automation. There are some tricks to achieve that using viewer. But yeah, it, we have just a limitation of this processing. This processing can take some, some time. So depending on the complexity of your design, it can take, take from, from seconds up to a minute. Uh, if you have a large design and if your code is uh, doing a lot of stuff using the API, all right? But we have ways to, to build configurators, to, to build, to create an interactive uh, behavior and interactive uh, experience for your user. All right, uh, now that we know about the engine, always uh, make sure to use the correct engine compatible with, with what your customers are using. We need to know about the activities. Activity, uh, one activity is going to specify uh, to orchestrate all of the execution. Activity is going to tell uh, to this this uh, to this job to this engine uh, to this to this to this uh, run to this instance uh, which engine it is going to use so including uh, both the, the the software and the version it's going to tell the number of input files the number of output files it's going to tell if the input files are uh, are demanded are are enforced. If the output files are enforced, it's going to tell how to, to run that, which is going to be uh, the, the main file. It's going to tell also uh, if the input and output file are zipped files or not, if it is just a, a Revit file 
So anything regarding that uh, is specified by the, the activity, all right? Once we define an activity, uh, we we can run an item and uh, run a, an execution. And this execution is going to enforce to control how the, the how this is going to behave for both the input, outputs, and any parameter. We are going to see in detail one details one example of uh, activity in the upcoming slides. The app bundle is the execution of the code. It, it is the code taking advantage of the API of the product. In our case, it's going to be a, a, a code using Rabbit API to perform any activity supported. So the way it works is that we have uh, we need a DLL, uh, a compiled code using uh, Rabbit API, with uh, using a specific structure for uh, for that, and also we need uh, some XML files. For those of you familiar with developing a plugin, uh, it is just like the bundle bundle that you uh, deploy to, to use an application, to use a, to install a, a plugin. We have a, a file specifying the name of this plugin. We, uh, it also specifies the, the DLL file to, that's going to be run. All of that is inside this uh, app bundle zipped folder, right? And with all of that, all of these right here are only going to be specified once. So I specify one engine, for instance, Revit 2024. I specify one activity. For instance, uh, this activity is going to use Revit 2024 engine. It's going to uh, require one uh, input file, which is a Revit file, and it's necessary. It can only works. It can only be used if I have one input file. It's going to uh, also need one output file. It is another Revit file. And this activity is going to use uh, my app bundle. And by app bundle, I always refer using the, the name of the app bundle. Uh, the app bundle will have the, the logic to use the API with the XML file containing the, the, the class and all of that stuff. All of these are specified once. After this being uh, specified, being stored in your, uh, in, in your under your APS app, we can run the work items. The work items are the execution of one activity pointing to one app bundle or multiple web bundles actually, uh, pointing to use uh, one engine against one input file. So if I have one activity that is going to, uh, the one that we're going to, you, that we'll use today for instance, to uh, delete, uh, delete walls from my Revit files. Uh, if I have one activity, uh, with instructions to delete walls. Every time I run this activity against one input file, I'll have one more work item being executed, right? So I can have one activity uh, being used by as many work items as necessary, thousands of work items, all right? Each execution will be one work item. Uh, we also have uh, additional resources when we talk about design automation. Uh, and some of these additional resources are the callbacks. This is different from the callback that we see from the uh, APS app itself. Uh, these callbacks are used to tell you when uh, the, your, your job is done or when your, your job is being processed. This uh, first callback here is was used before, uh, you can still use that but it's, uh, for these workflows where you have the input that's going to be uh, used, uh, required uh, during the execution of the job. But nowadays, we don't need to go through that because we have a new option called uh, Open Network. And after this first tutorial, we'll go through uh, one example using taking advantage of Open Network. The second one here on progress callback will reach your endpoint, your URL, can reach your API for uh, each, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's around 20 seconds. Each 20 seconds, it's going to reach your callback, telling that your work item is uh, being executed. So you know that your file is still being processed, processed, all right? And we have this last one here, that is the most useful one. This lets you know once your job is done. 
after your job is done, you can take advantage of your generated output, being that uh, PDF, a JSON file, uh, another Revit file, all of that. What happens when you uh, trigger the execution of one job, when you trigger one uh, work item, is that uh, it's going to your job containing uh, your appointing to one input file and uh, one uh, activity, it's going to be the last one in a queue. This is a really, uh, a really fast queue, but it's a queue to take care of all of the jobs around the world. So everybody is going that submits a job using design automation will join this queue. After a job is grabbed by the queue, it's going to download your file. Once it downloads your file, it's going to process the ER code against this downloaded file, generate some output, and then upload this output to where you specify it. As this might take some time, we cannot we can't uh, rely on one the same connection to return to us back this information about this execution. So you just start the job and receive an ID. With this ID, you can either check the status or listen or subscribe to this on complete callback that will reach you as soon as your job is done. All right. We'll do we'll check our status through both ways. Uh, one is through this callback URL and the other one is be by using the ID that is uh, returned by us. Don't worry about that now. It will be clear in in the throughout this uh, this session, right? To take the most of uh, design automation, we have all of these samples. Uh, I can share with you through the, our Slack channel this uh, presentation later. We have the Visual Studio Code plugin. If you use Visual Studio Code, you can perform most of our activities using uh, our Visual Studio Code plugin, including design automation, connecting with hubs, with viewer, data management, model derivative. Uh, most of the tasks can be uh, done using this plugin. We have the design automation manager also for that. Design automation tutorial is what we are going to use today. This Postman collection is the one that we are going to use today also. And we also have uh, some options, advanced options, like this sample right here to automatically create issues, ACC issues, uh, Bing 360 issues, sorry, based on uh, design checks and also the OSS manager and the design automation tutorial from the tutorial page that I shared uh, before this presentation, right? Enough talking. Now let's go to our tutorial. We start right here for inside our documentation. Step-by-step uh, -step tutorials, go over design automation, step-by-step -step tutorial and automate, automating Revit, right? Let me share the link. And there is a question here. I'll ask you to all, all of you go to this step-by-step uh, -step here. And after I answer this question, we can start working together with this. Uh, is the return only visible to the sender or I can set permission for other users to check the results? Uh, the result is rely to, to check the result. What which result you mean? The result of the execution of the or the output file. There are two results here. Uh, I'm I, I'm thinking you are talking about the output file, right? All right, the output file. Uh, remember, let me share it once more. Remember this process. You're going to make your data available in the cloud anywhere. You're going to generate the the uh, signed URLs, the links, so design automation can download your file, run your code, and you are going to specify the upload links. So if you upload, uh, if you specify a link in a storage that only you have access, only you will have access to that. If you uh, you can specify a storage, uh, for instance, to uh, upload it to uh, uh, an ACC folder or a Bing 360 folder. Uh, in this case, everybody with access to that folder will be able to see your your output file, your uh, design, right? If you 
place it in a in a AWS bucket or in, in Azure Blob Storage uh, that is managed by one external application, uh, the access to that data will be controlled by the application that is uh, retrieving or that that is connecting to that asset. All right. So it is not only for the sender. It's going to depend on uh, how you specify your your storage for the outputs. All right, got it, awesome. So now, can we start with this this piece? Everybody has Postman, so all right, let's begin with that. First thing you need to do is uh, downloading this uh, collection, this Postman collection. So you can just go through this link here. Let me open a new tab. And in this link, we'll have the collections. So right here, I have two options. Uh, I have the collection and I have the environment. So first of all, I'm going to download the collection. Let me see if I have it already here. Okay, I have it already here. So let me just delete this. Okay. Downloading the collection. Not confirm it. And we also need the environment. It should be ready soon. And after this is done, let me collapse this one and close all of this. I was testing these yesterday. Don't save. Don't save. Always discard changes, don't say. Okay, let me collapse this one and add this new one that I just downloaded. First of all, we go over collections. Uh, this plus mark right here. Oh, sorry, not this one. We have these options for import right here. And then we can up speak upload files and then we select our collection, not the environment. We need, first of all, the, the collection. Automating Revit, then we go with import. And this is the one that we just uh, grab it from tutorial, all right? We have each of the tasks uh, sp specified in a different folder. And to take advantage of that, we need uh, the environments. So, to grab the environments, we go over the environment session and select import, upload files. And now we select the environments JSON file. Import, and here we have our environment with a client ID, client secret, nickname for our bucket, OSS bucket key. Don't worry about all of that. We, all, we are going to specify all of these options as we go through our tutorial, right? So, okay, with that, we can start uh, going through this uh, tutorial, right? Everybody has this? Everybody with this? Collections and environments? Yes. Yes, thank you, Marco. Three, four, five, okay. Uh, download the Postman collection from. If you go under uh, automating rabbit, mm, there is this first, first, there is this actually the fourth link here Postman tutorial. Yeah, thank you, Fernando. If you go over this link, you can see an APS repo. 
and then under collections folder, you can see the collection and the environment. So just click select the collection, download it, and then do the same for the environment, download it. After that, you just go for Insomnia, import the new collection from file, and import the new environment. All right, uh, let's go quickly about this uh, tutorial. For this specific tutorial, we'll have uh, one bundle already deployed, already developed. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask you to don't go through this first task right here because it takes a lot of time and you need some expertise in order to uh, take advantage of the Revit API, compile everything, generate your, your bundle the proper way. So it takes time. We are not going to focus on this right now. It, it can be a lot. Uh, we are going to start with the second one. It is good to understand the design automation part. Uh, once you're familiar with that, you can then uh, create your own plugin with your own logic uh, and then convert it to, to use with the same, the same uh, collection right here, all right? So let's not go through that. We already have these uh, delete walls. I guess it, under the if upload an app bundle, it specifies, yeah, it, it does. So we are going to jump straight to the task to obtain one access token, right? Everything in our uh, our platform, any, any API itself, to, to take advantage of any service, you always need a token. And the, the token uh, is generated using this authentication API right here. It is based on this OAuth 2.0 standard. And uh, this works in a way that you can take advantage of your app credentials to generate short-lived tokens uh, to perform your activities. To generate a token, uh, you basically need to uh, Use one endpoint. In this case, we are going to we will go through this get to legged token. This is the one we are going to use today a lot of times. And to use that, we basically need to take advantage of our client ID and client secret. Client ID and client secret are available as our APS app credentials. The token is basically going to uh, check if this app has access to use our API, in this case, design automation, and then uh, use the service. If it is a service that has consumption, this consumption is going to be uh, to be uh, owned by, to be uh, charged to this user right here. I'm having problems to click on this, but it's going to be charged to this account right here, because this is the account that owns the APS app. All right, that's how it works. We generate a token, token uh, use the services uh, on behalf of this app. And this app uh, consume, uh, has credit consumption based on this account. To limit uh, our one token, to limit uh, the, the, the permission of tokens, we have what we call scopes. So through, through the scopes, we can specify if a token has permission to read information about the user, uh, read viewables, read data, write data, create data, create, read, update, delete buckets. And this code all is the one that we are going to use for design automation API. Every time we perform, a, we run a job on design automation, we are going to use this code all. Since we also need to, uh, a storage to host our designs in the cloud, we also need additional uh, additional tokens. We need a token to upload our designs, to create our buckets, to read data from bucket, to read our files, and then uh, in the last step, 
to update our uh, our output file to our bucket. So in the end, we'll see that our task in our second task will have uh, a lot of scopes specified, right? There are a few questions. So you can use to like to like a token even if we specify our apps as traditional web app. Yeah, the traditional web app is uh, the most flexible one. Traditional web app works with two-legged tokens and three-legged tokens, all right? That's why we always uh, tell you to use, start with this uh, type of app. Thank you very much, Fiorella, also. So yeah, first thing, we need to generate our token, this task right here. And for that, we need to specify our environment. This is important. Specify to use this design automation for Revit environment. And this environment should have your client ID and client secret specified. So let's go on our APS app, copy the client ID, paste it on our environment variable, copy our client secret, paste it on our client secret, reset, reset all, and then save it, okay? After saving, we can take advantage of our client ID and client secret. All right. So after doing that, we can check our headers. We are passing the, the client credentials here. And in our body, we are specifying which scopes we are going to use. Code all, since this is a sample, uh, this is the token that's going to be used in all of the, the next requests. We have the code all to use if design automation, data write to write our outputs on our buckets, on our cloud storage, data read to read our, uh, our data, bucket create, we are going to use a bucket to store our files, Bucket delete if you want to delete buckets, and then bucket read to read the data from uh, within a, a bucket. All right. With all of that specified, we can press send. It is going to connect with authentication API, grab a token. This is the token generated. And we can see that here we have some scripts to parse our data, our body from result, from the response, and then uh, set this new environment. DAS APS token as our APS token from response. It means that now, after sending this request and obtaining a token, we'll have this token available as uh, an environment variable. All right. Fernando, you, Fernando, you got the client ID specifier does not have access to the API product. Same here. Uh, okay. So, is your environment like this with client ID and client secret? Then we once you copy the client ID and client secret, you need to reset all. So the current value is this one. And then save. You need to save it. After that, right here, you'll have access to uh, your client ID, client secret. Oh, you don't have this reset all button. Maybe a different version of Postman. Uh, if you select, oh, you found it. Okay. And then you can. You also need to hit save. All three points is inside here, probably. So after that, you need to ensure that once you go to this uh, request, you can see the client ID and client secret. And then it, it should be ready to go because it's already... Oh, it still get the same error. All right. Let me interrupt my screen so you can share yours. Can you share a screen, please, Fernando? Sure, yes.
Uh, let's see. Oh, someone already got it. Uh, in the upper right, you need to set that you are setting uh, no environment. You need to specify the environment that you're going to use. Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, now you got it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So let me share it once more. Hope you can see it. I know there's a lot of stuff from Postman. That's one of the reasons I prefer Insomnia. So not talking about Insomnia anymore. <laughs> So, okay, with that, now we have our token to use on the next uh, requests, all right? Once more, this test uh, script right here is going to set this token as this uh, value for this environment variable right here. And by using this pointing to this environment variable, we can ensure we are, that we are always using uh, the token acquired, right? Now in the next task, everybody got the token? Anyone with problems grabbing the token? Okay, so let's go on. Oh, you're getting? Oh, Benjamin also. Charles, you're also with problem? Same. All right. Uh, can you share a screen, Benjamin? Right. This is an automation. Can you go to your environments, please? This is an automation for Revit. Client ID, client secret. Can you hit save, please? Now try the collections. Oh yeah, you need to hit save for it to, to store also. Thanks. Charles? Still get the same error. Oh, can you share your screen, Charles? Wait, I remember you from Accelerator, right, Charles? Is that you or I'm mistaken with someone else? From Chicago Accelerator. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice to see you. Can you share a screen, please? Okay, let's see. It seems to be okay. Can you uh, click on the, the eye logo on the top right corner, uh, right uh, on the right side of Design Automation for Revit? Yeah. Oh, you need to persist your client ID and client secret because they are the initial value, but not the current value. So go over environment. Yeah, uh, on the three dots, right side of share. No, uh, up. Oh yeah, right here, right there. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, not persist. I guess it was. It is reset. Reset all. Reset all. Yeah. You need to. You need to copy once more. Sorry for that. When I say persist, it deleted. Yeah, client ID, client secret. Reset. Now you need to reset before doing that. Now save. Yeah. Now we should be able to grab a token. Yeah. Now I got it. Awesome. Okay, let me share it once more. No worries. Just so you know, I struggled with all of this uh, a few days ago with insomnia, preparing for this because I use with Postman. 
I struggle with all of these in Postman a few days ago. So yeah, that's why we have a better uh, experience. So, all right, now that we got the token, we need to create our nickname. Uh, for design automation itself, uh, most of the data, including the design automation logic, the, the app bundle, sorry, the app bundle logic, including the script, also the activities, orchestrating the inputs, outputs, engines, all of these, all of those needs to be stored uh, against your APS app. This was a question by someone asked, Jung, Jung, I hope I'm saying your name properly. Jung asked uh, if this should be hosted in your in the cloud. The answer is yes. Your APS will uh, host, will own the, the logic for your app bundle and your app bundles and your activities, all of that. And to make access, to access that, to make a reference to these activities, you have the activity name, you have the app bundle name, the version for both of these activities and app bundles. But before that, we need to point to your app. Since all of those are hosted in your app, once pointing to one specific asset, you go through the full name of that asset. The name starts with uh, the, the, the app that hosts this asset. And then after that, you have the, the name of the asset being the name of the activity or the bundle. And then you have the version. You can think of that like the, the address of your, your resource that you are, are being, that is being hosted uh, with uh, APS backends. And since the first entry point is your app, uh, instead of just you just using this client ID all the time, it is not user friendly. It's not good to read. You we have this endpoint that allows you to create one nickname for your app. Your nickname can be something like uh, the initials of your name, uh, uh, some some name that uh, refers to this name of this app. For instance, mine could be uh, JM uh, AEC. Tech 2023, for instance, and all of that is valid. You just need to create uh, some name that is user friendly and also that is globally unique. It needs to be globally unique across the entire platform. So if you try to create one like test app, it is not going to be valid because someone is probably already using this one. And I'll guess that someone that started using the automation a long time ago. So this is the, the goal of this task right now. We are going to create a nickname that is going to be used in the next uh, the next next tasks to point to one specific resource. Just go there right now, task three. As you can see, uh, we have here in the body our DAS nickname, and this is one of our environment variables, DAS nickname. So just, uh, Try to think of a globally unique name. I'll go with my initials, JPON, uh, AC Tech, 2M3. Yeah, this should be enough. Okay. Okay, so let's go with this one. Let me reset all, save. We always need to do this. And then for this one, we can just hit send because in our headers, we are making a reference to our uh, environment variable that is pointing to the that is pointing to the, the, the token that we retrieve it, right? So we just replace with, uh, we just specify our name and then hit send. Uh, oh, this is invalid. It can be only letters, lowercase, uppercase, and numbers, and underscore. So we need to change that. Inside our environments, we have only these, these options and 20 characters long. So let me go there. Instead of this, I can use underscore. Reset all, save. And now if I go under collections, I can just hit send and then status 200, meaning that a successful response 
and my nickname is now uh, this one right here. All right. Nickname created. Everybody got the nickname created? Thank you, Fernando. Diego. Awesome. Once more, this uh, test script right here is taking care of adding this token to our variable. And I believe, oh no, we don't need to do that this time because we are already specifying our nickname as an environment variable. So yeah, it's already there. Can I move to task four? Got it, everybody. Nickname created, awesome. So let's move to task four. Now that we have our one nickname, we have the, the token, we can take care of the app bundle. App bundle is going to put together uh, the logic to, uh, to take advantage of our API. Uh, to upload an app bundle, we need to upload the, this app bundle as a zipped file, just like this one. We are going to use this one that's already prepared for us. And to use this app bundle, we are going to have basically a folder. And inside this folder, we have this uh, the contents that is the usual content uh, that comes together with one plugin. For those of you that are familiar with uh, writing a plug plugin for Avid, you need to specify usually uh, these contents saying that which versions are, are, are supported by that. Uh, and then we have this XML file containing the full class name to access this code. Uh, we have the path to the DLL. In this case, this XML file right here is hosted uh, in uh, this, uh, sorry, this is the adding, this is the adding. This is the adding or, or the, I don't do that for a long time. The bundle contents, the DLL. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. This is the, the adding. So right here in the adding, we have the path to the DLL. Since those are in the same folder, we just need to specify it like this. In our case, it will be a delete walls.dll. It is a code to delete all of the walls for our uh, Revit file. And then we have this adding GOID. It needs to be unique. You can't have two uh, plugins with the same ID. We don't have to worry about that because our engine will only have our plugin. It is a Revit engine that is going to run only with this plugin. So if you have multiple plugins, each engine that you execute is going to just only download the plugin for this execution. You It's not like you'll have uh, all of your uh, sandboxes with all of your plugins, right? Full class name, description, vendor ID, and so on. All of this information, uh, the type will be always DBD database application because this is the, the namespace that we can use, that we can refer to. And now uh, let's take care. Let's take a look of what this app bundle is doing. If you go right here, step one, understanding the structure, we can click on this link. I'm going to open in a new tab. And this is what we need to download, delete walls app.zip. This is the app bundle, all right? Let me see if I have this already. Let me delete this one. If you click right here and select this option, we can download our app bundle. This app bundle has the compiled code for this right here. And let me see. I know that somewhere we have the, the source code for this. Yeah, 
if we go right here, converting, adding, here we have the, the source code for the, our app bundle. Where is it? All right, right here. Uh, every time we, we, we need to run uh, uh, an external uh, application, uh, run a job on design automation, we are going to take advantage of these events right here on startup uh, by uh, using this handle design automation ready event. And from there, from inside this handle design automation ready event, we are going to call our uh, our logic, our function. In this case, we are going to call this method right here, delete all walls. And this method is going to basically take advantage of uh, our Revit app, our, our document, our open uh, Revit file, and from there, start a new transaction to delete all of the apps. We basically have here a, a filter element collector to retrieve all of walls, all of elements from wall category, from wall class, and then we are going to delete all of that. After that, we, we commit this transaction and then save this file. Every time we do this, this task, we save a file inside a plugin. It will be saved as a Revit file, uh, in, in this case with this name, on top of our, uh, our sandbox folder. And from there, once this job is done, design automation will take care of uh, grabbing this file and upload it to the specified location, all right? We, can, we should also handle failures, handle failures on our execution. And also at any point, if I, for instance, type here console.writeline and uh, write uh, a text saying uh, all of the walls has been deleted, I will be able to see this data, this text inside my, uh, my log of execution. Design automation, as soon as it, it finishes executing, it's going to return to us a log with all of these steps uh, processing this, this job from the time it downloads the file until the time it uh, finishes uploading our output design. All right. Let's go back to uploading an app bundle. Uh, now that we know that our source code is going to delete all of the walls, this is the structure that it needs to be uh, placed. Package contents, delete uh, the DLL itself, uh, the add-in with all of these informations from our from our uh, bundle from our logic. With all of that, uh, we need to we can now register our app bundle. This is the first step uh, to to upload one app bundle. Since we are going to upload uh, and it's going to be hosted uh, against our uh, owned by our APS app, we need to generate a, a URL to, to make this upload. And this is what this uh, first endpoint is going to return to us. We are going to make uh, this request specifying that we, we need to upload an app bundle with this ID. In this case, delete walls app. We are going to specify which engine we are going to use. So this app bundle is always pointing to uh, Revit 2024. And then we can add a short description of what this app bundle is actually doing. Let's go do that with uh, the task four of our uh, our collection. So in task four, if you go over our body, we have all of this information here. If you want to change the DID, uh, change the description, feel free. Uh, I just would not advise you to change this because this is the name used in all of the next requests. So if you change it here, you need to change it in a lot of places. So for now, just stay with this name. Uh, once you get familiar, you develop your own plugin. Uh, you can pick the, the ID of your preference, all right? So let's hit send. It is all once more taking advantage of our uh, authentication of our token. And if we hit send, we can see uh, the return to us. This is going to return to us one URL and some keys that we need to use in order to upload the code, the, the zipped file to this, uh, to, to point to this, pointing to this uh, app bundle. So by using this URL, this endpoint URL, to store on uh, AWS S3 service, using this policy uh, and this uh, signature algorithm uh, date and security token, 
we are going to uh, upload our, our contents uh, and from there, it will be hosted on our, uh, on our app, right? And every time you point to this app bundle, you'll be actually pointing to uh, the, the zipped file that we upload in the next step, right? Here to make it easier for us, we have uh, this script parsing the, this body and specifying setting all of these data that are required to upload our file as environment variables. And if you check uh, in the next request, all of this information from body are pointing to uh, these environment variables that were created, that got created right here. Delete walls app URL is this one right here. Upload parameters and point URL is this one right here. Delete walls app URL, sorry, is this one right here. The, the version that we, we specified is also available. Oh, version is not necessary, sorry. The uh, delete walls data key, the, the key to, to uh, allow us to upload design to this, uh, the, the, the zipped folder, zipped file to this uh, endpoint is grabbed from, this is grabbed from the response and then we have it available right here as this environment variable. And the same for all of these uh, variables that we just uh, retrieved. Here, the last variable is a file, and this file will be the zipped file that we just downloaded, delete walls app.zip. All right. If we use a, a different uh, bundle, we, we would not be able to see any errors here. Uh, we just have this, uh, this connection between this logic this uh, code from this uh, zipped file and these keys right here made uh, from this uh, request right so as soon as we upload this uh, the zipped file we hit send and with the response status of 200 meaning that it was successful now we have our bundle stored right there and it automatically creates with uh, uh, latest version. Now we need to handle the version for our, our bundle, All right? Just like we have uh, nicknames and, uh, and bundle IDs, uh, the Design Automation API lets us handle multiple version, lets us uh, address versioning for both the app bundle and the activity. And through this versioning, we can uh, control, we can point to one specific version. Uh, if you want to execute a, a, a work item for uh, development purposes or for uh, production uh, ready events. In this case, for instance, since we are just testing, we are going to point version one as with one ID. This is uh, a, a available through this alias endpoint. We can always use alias for our version. In this case, we are going to point version one to the test alias. So instead of just using version one, two, and three, we could, we could uh, specify test, ver test version and uh, development version and also production version. At the end, we'll point to a uh, nickname, the app bundle, and the, the alias for a specific version, right? So in this next uh, request right here, we are going to specify the version one, uh, specify the alias test, pointing to the first version of this uh, delete walls app, app bundle, right? If you change this name right here, you need to change it also right here. So we can just hit send. And now our test alias will be always pointing to version one. Uh, there's a question, can you use APS to interact with Revit API directly or do we always need to have a upload a plugin? Benjamin, always need to have a, to upload a plugin. You, you always have to upload a plugin. There is no way to directly connect with the Revit API. That's the purpose of this slide right here. Uh, this bundle is now this code using Revit API in the Revit uh, core console. 
this is a sandbox environment. This an automation only goes this far on triggering this uh, this process. This automation can directly connect with Revit API. The, the APIs are not exposed by design automation. So if you need to update, you can always go through these uh, next endpoints right here. Update in your net bundle. This is going to register a, a new set of uh, keys, just like this. And then you need to, to, uh, to upload the, the, the new code to update the bundle and patch the alias to the new version. We don't need to go over that right now. We stop at this, this phase right here. Now we have our app bundle ready to be used, all right? With that, we can start talking about activity. Before going to the activity, uh, everybody got to this point. Uh, to check that we have the app bundle available, we can list uh, all of our app bundles, I believe. Or oh, we don't have this endpoint right here. Yeah, we don't have it, but if you receive it, this 200 requests, 200 status for each of these requests, you're good to go. Can we move forward to the activity? Four oh nine conflict. Uh, maybe you try it two times. Uh, Diego, on create an alias, are you sure you press it only one time? Oh, it worked the first time. There, there should be a way to check the history. Uh, Fiorella is probably on this step right here. Upload the app bundle. Uh, you, you selected the correct file right here. You need to click on this option and add your file. Can you please share your screen? Okay, delete walls, not zip. Uh, there is a message in there. What is in this? Is this message in this? This file is not. Oh, no, there's no problem. You can ignore that. That just means that you are using the, the local environment. So, yeah, if you download it, there is, there's no. If you upload it, sorry, you already got the 200 status. There, there's no, you don't have to worry about that. And for the alias, it's all good. Okay, created, awesome. So yeah, you can stop share your screen, should be good to go. Okay, let me share mine. Move this back here. No worries. Okay, now that we have uh, the app bundle ready. Let's take care of the activity. So the activity once more is the orchestration of our, uh, how our job is going to work, what is required or not. It's going to tell our design automation, uh, it's going to tell our, our engine, uh, our, our, our item, our run, our, our execution, which engine we are going to use, which version, which app bundle we are going to use, how this execution is going to work, and also uh, uh, is going to exp specify e each parameter that is necessary or not. We are going to specify the input parameters, the input files, uh, the output files, if those are, are zipped, zipped files or not. And all of that is specified once we publish one uh, activity, all right? This is the body of an activity. Don't get, uh, uh, you, you get familiar with that with, uh, as long as you practice. Uh, don't get scared with this. Uh, basically, we need to specify one ID 
for our activity. Since you're using delete walls, we are going to uh, tell uh, name everything as delete walls, activities, delete walls, a bundle, and so on. This is the command line. Since we are talking about batch processing, basically, uh, as soon as our job starts being executed, as soon as our file is downloaded, it's going to simply pick this uh, command line and run this command line. Uh, in our case, it's going to run the Revit core console without user interface, the executable, and this will be our input file. And this is the app bundle we are going to use, the delete walls app bundle, all right? This is just a, a command line to execute our job. So the Revit file, the input file will be this Revit file right here. The local name is going to change depending on the, the, the file that we need. So we always specify with this uh, option right here. Uh, we are, for this activity, we are saying that this is not a zipped file. This is not on demand. We don't need to download it during execution time. The verb get, meaning that this needs to be downloaded from the uh, sandbox per perspective. And here we have a short description. We also have this uh, flag required to, meaning that we can only run this job if we have an input file. If we don't have an input file, we can't, uh, we, we won't have a, a, a Revit file to delete the walls from, all right? In this case, we also need a resulting file. This case will be the output file. We are specifying the name. So every time you run a job, it is going to run this job generating the, this file with the same name, result.rvt. Uh, for this case, it's not a zipped file. We have the verb put, meaning that we need to upload this file uh, after execution. Short description, required true, this, meaning that this job is only going to be successful if this file is generated, right? So it needs to end the job generating this result.rvt file. If we check once more our adding, our logic, let me just go here. We can see that uh, our source code is always saving uh, this file with this name. So I run the first file, uh, rabbit file way.rbt. It's going to re generate result.rbt. I run my second file, create a new work item. Uh, the, the input file is Revit file b.rvt. It's going to generate uh, from the sandbox per perspective from this uh, instance, also a file with this name, result.rvt. From my uh, activity execution, it's going to grab, always grab this result.rvt file and upload it to where I specify, all right? Here we are also specifying the engine, in this case, 2024. And here we have one, uh, our app bundles. We can always use more than one app bundles. And that's why we have this uh, array right here as this value. At the end, we also have one short description to let uh, us know uh, what this activity is going to do. So let's go there, create our activity. This is our test file. And if you check this endpoint right here, create an, an activity. In the body, we have the same structure. For our case, we have delete walls activity. Delete walls app is the name of our app bundle. And as you can see right here, it is using our nickname to point to, to this app bundle. Uh, from the nickname, we have the, the name of the bundle itself, delete walls app. This is the name that we created right here delete walls app and at the end we are pointing to one version and pointing to our version not through the name the number of the version itself but through one alias this test alias right here that we created in this step test alias is pointing to version one all right so as soon as we hit send we are going to create this activity and now we have the status 200 uh, meaning that we created this activity and this is activity uh, version one, all right? Once more, just like the bundles, I can control the versioning for my activity. 
and that is done also through uh, creating alias. So now we can specify the test alias pointing to version one of this activity. We can just hit send and test alias will be pointing to this uh, brand new activity right here. There is a question in app upload the app bundle, the updated app bundle to load this sandwich file. Uh, probably this right here. We don't need to go over there. This is only if you need to update the app bundle. We are not updating that bundle. We are just going to create the first version and this is good for us to, to test, all right? But let's say if you make a change in your source code, compile your code and then generate a new zip file. In this case, yes, you need to update uh, 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 an existing app bundle pointing uh, to one, one engine and one description. And as, as a result, you have all of this information generated once more. And then you select the new file, the new zipped file containing the new compiled code, all right? Going, going back to activity, uh, after creating the activity and uh, assigning an alias, we have now uh, access uh, one activity ready to, to be used, right? So everyone got, they, everyone took care of this. <coughs> Sorry for that. I was not able to mute my mic. Yes, I think so. Uh, now, good thing is that we have one, uh, if you go over extras here, we have uh, one endpoint to list our activities. So after doing that, we can just use this endpoint and hit send and it will return to us our, a list of available activities. As you can see, I have one activity uh, pointing to this name, delete was activity using my nickname and plus I have the test version, all right? So everybody can see this. In this case, it will be your nickname, the one that you specify it. Yes, awesome. Yes, great, great. Jung. Awesome. Uh, you might be wondering, what about these other activities? Uh, once you create your app, you can take advantage of some uh, a subset of activities that comes by default with your app. Those are usually activities that people need. People, uh, that those are common activities that you can take advantage. And they, since they are popular, they are really popular on our platform, we just make it uh, available for everyone. For instance, this case of this plot sheet uh, set to PDF. This is one common AutoCAD activity. All right, so you can use that without even uh, creating uh, a bundle. All right, I see one, two, three, four, five. Is there some place we can get many more of these popular activities? Uh, Fernando, uh, there is, uh, by default, only this one, this list. And since this is, has a pagination token, you can use this to go through the other page and check other ones. Uh, if someone makes uh, an activity uh, public, makes a bundle, we usually make bundles public, you can check uh, on our uh, GitHub repos. 
I have some, Ethan has some, but it, it will not be as easy as this one because if, if it is not listed here, it's just a, a public source code, you'll need to go through uploading a, a bundle, uh, creating activity, and then you can use. But that always depends on if the source code is, is public, is MIT licensed or not. If it is, let me share with you one example. Uh, right here, repo. Extrometry. There is one to extract materials. This one. This is the one that we are going to use if we have time after this tutorial connecting to this automation to uh, open network to connect with an external API. In this case, for instance, the, the code is MIT licensed, so you have access to the source code, uh, the, the bundle in a zip file, and all of the, the payload for the activities right here. So for, for each of these cases that uh, us as developer advocates uh, create for you, you can just uh, go there and create activity in that bundle. Um, so yeah, this is the, the common case where you can find uh, public activities, popular activities, right? There are some people missing to uh, get to give me feedback on this step. Everybody has the activities. Everybody were able to create an activity. Thank you, Charles. Okay, so let's move on. Let me go back. Now that we have one activity, we need to prepare the cloud storage. Before going there with the cloud storage, let me just go back sure this slide right here uh remember when i said uh what what needs to be done to process your designs we need to make our data available in the cloud any cloud storage works we just need to send the links uh to for design automation so it has permission to download the inputs through web requests it's going to process and then uploads the results also through web requests using the, the links that you provide, all right? Of course, since this is from APS, it is easier if you always use your the APS storage. But this is not uh, required. You can use any storage uh, as long as it supports uh, generating a signed URL. So if you use Azure or AWS without this contents, context, you might need to use uh, other APIs to generate the signed URLs connecting with uh, APS and then handle download of input and upload of outputs. Apart from there, uh, you should be good to go. Before talking about uh, cloud storage, uh, the API, before handling this cloud storage, let's talk about the API that we are going to use to address this. Every time you need to address uh, manage data in our platform, we are always going to use data management API. And data management API, it works uh, on top of one, uh, one AWS service called a, uh, S3, Simple Storage Service. With APS, we have, you have access to this object storage service ser uh, functionality right here. And through this OSS, what you call OSS, we have access to two entities mainly, objects and buckets. At the end, each file can be stored in the cloud uh, in what you call buckets. You can think of buckets just like uh, some sort of folders uh, replicated and uh, they have a, a great performance for uh, connecting for uh, being accessible uh, in cloud environments. And the idea is that uh, through this bucket, you have unlimited storage. 
once you move your, your application to production, you have unlimited storage. For now, since we are just developing, we have a limit of five gigabyte storage. So first thing we need to do is create a bucket to host our designs. When we create a bucket, we need to also specify a globally unique name and we can specify two options, two, uh, two parameters for a bucket. We can specify its region. It can be US or Europe. We, we, you can also specify the retention policy for that bucket. Retention policy, for retention policy, we have three available options, transient, temporary, and persistent. If we specify this first one, uh, it means that our bucket is going to automatically delete any file after 24 hours. If we pick the second one, it means that our bucket is going to delete after 30 days. And if we pick the, the, the third one, it means that our bucket is not going to delete anything automatically, only if you manually delete your files or the bucket itself, all right? After uploading a bucket, we are going to use uh, the bucket as storage for our input and output files. Let me close this now. If you have any any question on cloud storage for APS, let me know. I'm just going to rush a bit because we are getting to the the end of our, our time, and I want to cover uh, another uh, plugin with you. But yeah, right now let's take care of creating the bucket, and then uh, uploading our design to our, our bucket. Let's go there. This is covered in the task, task six. First of all, we need to create our bucket. Before creating a bucket, let's check the, the body. We are creating with a transient policy. If you want to change that, feel free. And uh, the bucket key, the name of our bucket is specified by the OSS bucket key environment variable. So let's go over the environment variables under OSS bucket key. Let's specify one name for our bucket. This name needs to be globally unique, just like the nickname. So I'm going to use uh, JPOM. Now we can use uh, additional signs. Let me stick with this one. AC Tech 23. This is an automation for Revit. Okay, this will be my, my bucket. So let me reset all, hit save. And now I can go back to my uh to my request. Let me watch the environment variables. I have my bucket key name. I can just hit send and it's going to create my bucket. Bucket created. Uh and I am the, the bucket owner. My my client ID is the, the bucket owner. All right. Client ID, this is the owner. After creating a bucket, we need to upload our design. So now is the part that we need to have one uh, design available. This file, this code is simply going to delete all of the walls. So I'll say not, do not pick a, a large file with a large number of walls because the larger the number of, of the, the walls, larger file, uh, the, the longer will be the processing time of your job. So since we are just testing, just uh, you can go with this delete walls.rbt file right here. Let me send you the link. And just download it, delete walls.rbt. Okay, got it. Now I can start uh, generating a signed URL. This time is not the signed URL that we are going to use for uh, design automation, but this signed URL we are going to use to upload our design to the bucket that we just created. This is done through this API, this API right here. Oh, there's a question. Greg, I got a bad request for a bucket. Reason, uh, valid field bucket key must be of the for form uh, oh yeah you're probably not using a valid name for the bucket key All right uh, how do i make a valid name 
uh, it needs to be from three to 128 characters. So, and you are limited to use uh, these uh, symbols that you got from the response. I use I use the same name as yeah as as my, my nickname. Oh, this is a nickname. Yeah, do I have to change it or add extra letters at the end like you did? Hmm. It it will only be unavailable if it, someone is already using that. Just add something just to make it unique. Your yeah, just try to to add something different add some some characters at, at the end and see if that works all right you can add like testing buckets or something like that oh it says bucket no i'm still getting the same error still can you share a screen instead of my sharing You can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, it I think you can it? use uppercase so uh, change AEC to lowercase. Oh yeah, that's exactly that. Thank you, Fernando. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, how do I stop share? Let me start sharing once more. I hope you can see it. All right. Now uh, we need to upload our design. And to upload, there are many options. We can handle upload by chunks. Uh, if you have large files, you need to handle that different chunks but since we are using a, a simple file a small file we can just generate a signed url this will uh, uh, generate a short uh, living url that can be used to upload our data and this is done through this endpoint right here all right uh, so let's go back it, it will take advantage of our uh, oss bucket key and our input file name so now before doing that, we need to go over our environment variables and specify any name for our input file. So since it is our input file, it needs to have the extension .rbt. I'm going to call it um, AC tech is an automation for Revit test .rbt. And this one don't need to be globally unique. It just needs to be unique inside your bucket. One bucket can't have two files with the same name, but uh, two buckets can't have files with the same name because those are not the same storage location. So I can just reset, hit save, and then getting back to uh, obtain a signed URL. Now I will obtain a signed URL to upload this file with this name under this bucket, All right? Hit send. And this, now we have one upload key uh, to, to, to upload this design, to, to complete this upload of this design. And we have some URLs. In this case, I am doing the, uh, the upload in one go, but I could break this file in smaller uh, parts. Let's say if I have a, a one gigabyte file, I could break this file in small parts of 100 megabytes and upload one by one. Uh, since this is a small file, I just have, I only have one URL. I upload there, and after that, I hit, I need to instruct uh, APS to build uh, that file using this upload key. So next step, next request, we are going to grab that file, that, that URL. This URL was created, was, was assigned to one uh, environment variable through our, our uh, script. And inside my body, I have to, I need to specify a file to be uploaded. So you can just click select file, uh, select our delete walls app, and then hit send. After sending, 
we need to complete the upload. And to complete the, the upload, we can just, uh, we, we just need to use the upload key. Upload key was also uh, assigned as this upload key environment variable by our script. So we just complete the upload. Upload complete. And now we can check our new file with this endpoint right here, list objects in a bucket. If we use this endpoint, we can see our brand new Revit file, all right? There's a question here. You can break up a Revit file into chunks. How does that work? Is it by source uh, code? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Fernando, it is by source code. You need to read as a binary file. And then uh, from, from your, your source code, uh, since you have, you can either have this in memory, uh, the, this, this binary file, you can read in ranges. There are methods to read, for instance, the five, five, the first five megabytes and keep looping through uh, each five megabytes until you uh, complete, uh, upload everything, right? Yeah, uh, AC, the AC uh, tag, uh, DA for, for our text, dot rbt test for dot rbt is the, the the same file when i upload a file to my bucket i can specify any name that i want it don't need don't need to need to be the name of my uh local file you see when i were creating this upload url uh obtain assigned url what is this body Oh yeah, right here. In the URL itself, here I am specifying the name of my, my file. And here I'm just specifying the, the bytes of my file, not the name. I just I'm just grabbing the bytes. The name is specified by the request itself. Right. I can share Fernando uh one code that handles breaking this file into chunks and then addressing that. If you Every time you need performance or handle gigabyte files, you can't achieve that with only one URL. All right. So everyone ready to submit a work item, make it run. To make sure you just need to list the objects in a bucket and see your file in there. As long as you see that, you're good to go. I just need a okay for, from everybody. No worries, take your time. Awesome, one, two, three, four, five. Can you show me where the bucket key is again? Uh, bucket key is inside our environment variable, OSS bucket key. And in the request, when we get the, the signed URL, that is uh, OSS slash v2 slash buckets slash OSS bucket key slash objects slash uh, the, the file name, the object key slash signed s3 upload. You don't have which option? <clears throat> OSS bucket key. Hmm. You can just create one. Let me copy tree, paste tree. Just create this value. You can just add a new value right here in the end and create that. Got it? Oh. 
awesome. So now let's run our work item. Let me go back, prepare cloud storage, submit a work item. Uh, so now is the last part. Uh, now that we have our activity, our file uploaded in the in the cloud is inside our bucket. We have the engine specified, the app bundle uploaded, all of that already taken care of. We can run our work item. Running one work item is always uh, using one activity, to pointing to one activity, sorry, against one output file, one input file to generate one output file. If you want to run that, uh, using uh, any uh, any other storage, you need to handle signed URL. But as I said, uh, if you want to run that with uh, with uh, APS storage, there is an easier way to do that. And this is your easier way is through this URL right here. Instead of generating a signed URL, just like you did here, we don't need to do that. Uh, you don't. You just need to specify the token one valid token and also one URM. URM is the is the identifier of one specific asset storage in stored in your bucket. As long as you pass uh, the pointage pointer to one file and one access token that has permission to download and upload this file, design automation is going to take care of everything for you. It is going to download the file from uh from your bucket process it in, in the engine, and then upload it once more. No need to generate a standard URL, complete upload, complete upload, and go through all of that. So let's take care of that. We just have this create endpoint, uh, create work item endpoint. This is pointing to our nickname. The activity is delete walls activity that we created, and we are using the test alias to point to a specific version. In this case, it will be version one, as we created right here. Uh, version one point uh, test alias pointed to version one, and uh, delete walls activity is the name of our activity created. Uh, right here, we are pointing to our input file using our object key, together with our URN and the OSS input file object key. This will be the value. Uh, now we need to also specify, this will be the input file that is going to use. Now we need to also specify one output file through this uh, OSS output file object key. Uh, and it's important to note that this file does not exist. Uh, it is going to be created after the execution of your job and the automation is going to place it there. So I need to ensure that I'm going to type here one name that is not yet in the bucket. Because if I try to create a file in a bucket with a name that already exists, it's going to raise one error, right? So I'm going to use AC tech. No, let me just use output file dot RVT. Let's keep it simple. Output file dot RVT. Reset all. Save. And with this configuration, as soon as I run this, this uh, item, it is going to uh, grab this file, my input file, download, process, generate the resulting Revit file, and uploading with this file with this name that I specify right here. Uh, just to be clear, from the test one, it is always generating this result or RVT. But this is the name inside the sandbox instance. This is the name inside my execution of my uh, work item. It is not the name in my local storage, in, in my uh, cloud storage for the, the output to be there. It is just going to save as this file. And then our activity is going to grab this result or RVT and this will be the resulting file, the output. The name of the output is specified during the work item uh, execution. This will be the name, the output name that I uh, specify. Is it clear? I only specify the output file name in the, in, in the work item execution, not in the activity, 
and not in the uh, bundle itself. Bundle and activity are only going to see the name from the send bot box instance. If I run this, I'll be able to see uh, access tokens provided uh, is invalid or expired. Uh, you, you should also be see, see this message. This means that uh, our token is expired because it's only valid for one hour. This means that, that this means that we are uh, more than one hour uh, testing this uh, application. So we can just generate a new token and then go back to create work item and hit send. Once we do that, uh, it's going to retrieve to us the status right now is pending. Uh, the time it joined the queue, remember, there is a queue with all of the, the items from uh, the everybody using the platform, and also one ID. This ID pointing to, points to this execution of the job, and we can use this ID to check about the status of our work item. This request uh, has uh, some script to set this ID as this the value for this environment variable. And if I go to this next request right here, we can check this the, the status using uh, this ID that we just generated. We can just hit send. And you can see that after just a few seconds, it already started downloading our input file. It means that design automation, uh, well, our job was grabbed from the queue and now it's already starting uh, the download. And after a few more seconds, our job is done. And through this URL right here, we'll have access to the report. In the stats uh, parameters, we can have access to the time it, the download started, the time the instructions ended, instructions started, instructions ended, and then uh, the upload ended and it finished the job. You have a consumption based on the processing time from this second line, download starts, until this one, upload ends. This will be uh, the amount of time that will be uh, you'll be uh, charged against, all right? And through this URL right here, we have access to one uh, report. Let me copy. If we paste right here, it is going to download for us the URL. No, come on. Let me copy this here. It is going to download this report and inside this report, we'll have all of the execution. First of all, we have the activity and then it starts downloading and the ends downloading and it downloads phase successfully and start uh, downloading the, 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 the bundle that's required. And then it starts processing the bundle itself. And once the file is, is ready, it starts uh, uploading the file, uploading through this line right here. At the end, it's going to send to us all of that. And in the execution of our work item, uh, it's always going to, uh, if we type a console.write line on our, on our uh, source code, it will always uh, paste uh, everything that we type in here. So we can take have an idea of how our job is being processed, how our job is being executed, all right? There is a question. I don't get a report. Stats is in progress. In progress means that he's still executing your, your file, all right? Status fail download. Um, okay. Uh, Jordana, can you share a screen, please? Let me see, fail download. Fail download means that uh, design automation were not able to uh, download your input file. So maybe uh, the file was, was not there. Maybe uh, the key was different. Okay, see you. So you see your URN, it doesn't have the extension. A slash uh, AC on. Can you go back to your uh, the task six? Get obtain signed URL. 
Yeah, this one. So, oh no, better, better than that. Can you list your your objects in a bucket inside the extras? Inside the four? Scroll down. Yeah, if you scroll down. Under the extras folder, there is list objects in bucket in a bucket. No, the the one before that, yeah, this one. So you see your object key, it it don't have the uh the extension. You need to save the object key with the extension. It needs to be to have the dot rvt. Got it. So after that, you need to upload it to your file once more, uh, generate a new signed URL, and then uh, run the work item. If you keep clicking send uh, the work item, you're going to submit a lot of work items. Every time you, you hit send, it is going to to uh, generate a new work item, so lot a new pro processing and a new cost associated. So be careful with that. Okay. Uh, so here include RBT. Yeah, you need to include RBT, and you, then you can persist. Sorry, not persist. Reset. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joao. Yeah. If the status was in progress, how how would we go about it being complete without hitting send again? Uh, you need to wait uh, until you, you can. You need to wait. Can you share your screen? I think I miss. I have mistaken which send you are pressing. So here under uh. Check status of a work item whenever I hit oh, yeah. the first time it said the status here said in progress. And then so I just waited a couple minutes and then hit send again. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's I no problem. This is the this is expected. Sorry. Because if you but, keep hit send to this previous one, it's going to keep uh, sending your request. But the other one is just to check the status. So you oh, need so to keep hitting send. Okay, so what you meant was creating a work item. If I were to hit send here, yeah, that that that's what it would. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay, this one uh, that is a better way to know when your job is done, and this is what we are going to cover right now. I'll just be a little bit faster, so because we don't have much time. But yeah, you can always uh, watch the report and reach us if you have any additional questions. All right. Uh, there are some questions here. I got the same error. Access token is invalid. Go to test tool. Yeah, if you have the invalid token, you just need to generate a new one. You can always generate a new token. Can I share my screen again? Yeah, well, let me interrupt my then. Can you see it? Not yet. Yeah, now I can see it. So after changing my extension to RVT, I sent it again here and in the create a work item, but it's not working yet. Yeah, because you need to upload the file once more. Because okay. the, you, you change the, the key, but the file are still there, save it as without the extension. Where should I go here? So oh. you go under prepare cloud storage, obtain signed URL. Task six, okay. obtain signed URL. And yeah, you hit send for that. Mm -hmm. And now you go under, you already hit send for that. Once yeah, once let me send okay. one more. Now you go to the next, uh, Request, upload the, the input file. It is already there, right? So you can just hit send once more. And now complete the upload. 
them. Click send. Yeah. Now you see there is there are two objects in your bucket, but this new one has the dot rbt extension. So now okay. you can create your work item and it's going to download the file correctly. Oh great. Okay. Let's thing. just check through status. Yeah, it should be really fast. The file is less than one megabyte. Send again here? Yeah, because it automatically assigns the the value for the delete walls work item ID. Yeah, in from there you can just keep hitting send until it reaches a uh, status success with uh with all of the, the information. Okay. All right. Um, let's just wait to see if it works okay. this time. Oh, okay. Let me share with you right now how you can uh check your designs. You can of course download your files and open this file in uh in, in the Revit engine, in the Revit version that you have. But what is better is use these bucket tools right here. So you don't have to download anything. Let me place the paste the link here. Through these bucket tools, you can simply copy and paste your client ID and client secret. And it will automatically uh, let you access everything that is in your bucket. So these files are not translated. If you remember when I said uh, in the beginning of, uh, of this session, how it works to render a design in browser, you need to process the design, translate it, and, and then uh, you see this translation using viewer. This is exactly what this app is doing. Once you click here, it's going to start translating your design. And after the end of the translation, you'll be able to see it in viewer right here in this right window. It's just uh, going to take some time. Translation, translation complete. And here you can see a file without walls. To compare, just for comparison, we can see the first one. This is the input file. It probably has some walls. I hope so. If not, there is nothing to see but I, I believe they, they added some walls. Still 0%, we need to wait for this translation to complete. Yeah, done. And now we can see many walls with different uh, formats, all right? Different geometries. I was expecting a wall to make a room here, but I don't know why someone chose this, chosen this, but yeah, these walls got deleted. All right, so now uh, there is a better way for you to know when your job is done instead of uh, two things that I need to share. A better way to know when your job is done instead of keep sending these requests this is the purpose of this. Uh, this is the purpose of this uh, incomplete callback URL, and also uh, there is a way through our open network to connect with your uh, external library with your external uh, API. Through open network uh, feature is already available to all of you. Uh, you can use in your source code some snippets to connect with, or to send messages or to send requests to external APIs. This is what this app is doing, this uh, app bundle is doing. This bundle is basically extracting all of the materials from my uh, Revit file and generating a new JSON file. Uh, together with that, it is also going to Every time it uh, retrieves on material, it's going to send this material through this function. And this function is going to use HTTP client to send this material to the URL that I can specify, any URL provided, all right? So let me just go really quick 
here we have this webhook.site feature that is we really useful. Web, is webhook.site miss it uh, a key. This site uh, generates for you one unique URL. So everything you send to this URL, you can see right here. It's a way for testing webhooks and uh, endpoints without you needing to generate a server and host anything in the cloud. Uh, since we have only 20 minutes, I'm going to do it uh, really fast. But yeah, you. I hope you have the recording and you can reach out to with questions on how to to make it uh, if you you're not able to to complete using these instructions uh, as any as any activity any uh, a bundle this requires a specific uh, activity payload and also a specific work item payload so to use this i can just copy this activity right here i can go over the create activity phase create new activity and I'm going to duplicate this one. The name I'm going to use is create this activity open network. Okay, and now I can replace this one with what I have here. So I have a new ID to Revit Materials Extractor. Uh, I have a uh, a new app bundle. Oh, sorry. Before that, we need to upload our app bundle. This app bundle is available here. Let me download it. And right now we have our new app bundle. Okay. And now we need to, first of all, uh, register a new app bundle. Let's see the name it uses. It's using this Revit Materials Extractor app bundle. So let's create one with the same name. Let me call it uh, Extract Materials Open Network. And now I can hit send. Now we need to upload it, automatically addressing all of that. So I can just pick a new file. This is my bundle. It is uploading. After that, I need to create an alias. And here I need to change the name of my app bundle. In this case, it will be materials extractor. The name I specify it. And I can use the test alias for version one, right? Hit send. Now I have this new app bundle available. Now it's time to create my activity. In this case, I use a test, not dev. And here I need to specify my nickname because this nickname is for this app that I created uh, and in here I have everything materials extractor pointing to this uh, app bundle that I have this is the name of my activity Revit materials extractor activity and with that I can just hit send it is going to create one activity and now I can uh, assign one alias, the test alias for this activity. I just need to replace the name of my activity here. And if I list my activities, I can see my new Revit Materials Extractor activity with the test uh, alias. Now it's time for the work item. Let me once more duplicate this here. Rename it as Open Network.
and I'm going to use the sample for the work item that I have here. Let me just replace this one. Uh, and in here, just like uh, the previous work item, we need to specify the activity ID, uh, the input file, this specific uh, this uh, specific uh, work item requires uh, JSON data. Let me just check here. I missed the this data. Is this one right here? This specific uh, work item requires uh, a JSON data. So it needs to be used, uh, a JSON file containing the URL we are going to connect with. The URN would be just the same that we had before for the resulting file also. And now we have the on progress and on complete uh, URL. On progress is going to read our callback each 20 seconds and on complete is going to read our callback after the end of the execution of our job. So let's just take care of that. I just noted that I used the incorrect bundle because I need to use the design automation, the open network bundle. Uh, let me use this bundle right here. Sorry for that. We need to go through that once more. Always good to rush, always bad to rush things. Uh, we need to go with this open network bundle because this is the one that handles the connection with uh, the open network. Instead of creating a new one, now I can use the uh, updating an existing app bundle. So let me use that with the name that I have, materials extractor. Extract materials using open at work. Update a new version. It's going to automatically assign all of these values. And now I need to select my file. The file will be this bundle that is using open at work. Now I upload this bundle. Fifteen minutes. Okay, should be good. After that, I need to patch my uh, alias test alias to version two. Before doing that, I need to change this app bundle name. The one that we created is Materials Extractor. So let me go here under patch, change this app bundle name, hit send, and if I list my activities. I have here this same activity now pointing to the app bundle that I just uh, uploaded, all right? Now I need to also, uh, this, this activity is good to go, is good to use because it is already pointing to this uh, app bundle. Sorry, not this one. This activity is good to go because it's already pointing to, to the test alias. Since I updated the test alias, is already pointing to open at work at bundle. So now I can create my work item. And for that, I need to assign the input file, uh, the output file and the URL, all of, all of these URLs. First of all, the input file, I can copy what I have here. I can use the URL for the input file. And I can also use the URN for the output file. Uh, post. For my input JSON, this uh, plugin itself, this code is going to rely on this JSON file to, uh, uh, to read which URL it's going to connect with. So, the good part of design automation is that every time you need to specify a JSON, you don't need to actually upload a JSON file 
and then use the uh, URL. We can simply uh, define a JSON file by using this prefix together with the, the, the JSON itself. The endpoint we are going to use is this one generated by webhooks.site. This is the unique uh, specified by us, and anything that is posted against this endpoint, we'll be able to see in this uh, page right here. So I can just go here and type this. I'm also going to specify this URL for the on progress URL and for the on complete URL. But now my this this job is going to uh, execute and generate one JSON file. So I can't use this same uh, output object here. This output is still pointing to a Revit file. Since it's not generating a Revit file, instead a, a JSON file, I need to go here under environments and under output key, I can type uh, output file.json and then reset, save. Now I go under create work item with open network. And I believe it's everything good to go. We can hit send. Uh, work item parameter was not provided. Oh, we need the ID of our activity. I forgot that. So let's go back under create a new activity. Actually, list activities. We can see this activity ID right here. Copy. And now we can create our work item. It's going to use this activity. Yeah, I was missing a J. It's going to create this uh, uh, work item using this activity. This will be our input file, uh, our input JSON, this URL to, to send our, our data. Uh, this will be the resulting file, JSON stored in our bucket. And every time it has some progress or complete, it's going to also post that in our uh, URL generated by webhook.site. So let's hit send. And use it arguments. No match for input JSON. There's something wrong with the activity. Let me check. Oh. Got it. I miss it. This step right here. Let me do. Update the activity once more. Now it will be good to go. Okay. Let me create a new activity. Private material extracts. I need to update this activity actually. Okay, now it's pointing to the input JSON file. I got mistaken by these two uh, requests right here. Let me move this to test. Parameter ID. ID should be no. In this case, since I'm updating one activity. And this will be the value for my updated activity. Now I can update the alias. Revit, uh, the test alias will point to this new activity. And now I should be able to create this work item. I forgot to change that. Update it once more. This is version three now. I need to update to version three. Uh, 
second node I should create. Now it's pending. Okay, and now we can check the progress in our. Hmm, okay. Yeah, definitely need more time to to check this. Not in a rush. Sorry for that, guys. We still have eight minutes. Let's do it this then. Let me answer the questions and then I get back to this. If you have time, uh, we you we you follow this one. And if not, you can check the uh the recording. All right. There is a question by Benjamin. Is it possible to link this to the viewers so users can see the result live? Not uh directly. Every time you need to send this uh, ask this request to viewer, send this result to viewer, you need to run a, a an execution, run a, a translation. So it's not going to be direct uh, connection. You need to always upload to a bucket, translate, and then uh, render in viewer. If you want to have a better experience, Benjamin, you need to, uh, you, what, what you usually do, people usually do, is having all of the possibilities already translated. So let's say you have a configurator for, uh, for a, a chair or for a, any family. You can have all of the possibilities of colors changing that in viewer itself. And then once the, the, the user start, uh, finishes selecting his options, then he reads send and the work item is going to generate the result just like he's seen uh, as a Revit file, right? This is covered in our configurators uh, lightning talks. And some people also asked previously about uh, interactive behaviors. Every time you need to have an interactive behavior, for instance, one user uh, making changes in in, uh, in viewer and then seeing the result of this change in, zero in a Revit file, uh, we need to mimic all of this that all of the tasks uh, from viewer to be later on uh, addressed by uh, the Revit API itself. Here is one example. Let me just go for this video. In this app, uh, we're, the user is basically grabbing uh, one to the view and drawing a polyline. After that, uh, from this polyline, we could grab these points and uh, based on this polyline, we could draw a, a line-based family or a, a, a model line, which is this case of this, uh, the, the context of this app bundle. And from there, translate that and generate that once more in viewer. Every time we need to, to have this uh, interactive experience, we need to grab the input from the user before and with this input can be a, a JSON file, then we run the job. We cannot uh, run the job, wait for input and then uh, for, for the user to select one element and then generate the result. We need to have all of this information before running the design automation job, right? Any other question before I, I test this is what is doing. This is using viewer to draw a, a polyline. And then we grab the, all of these points from this curve, submit the work item in progress status. Once this is done, it is going to generate the upload output file in our bucket. And then we can translate this output file and see back the, the results. And here we can see the polyline in the 3D view and also in the 2D view, all right? There's another question. What if I have a Revit model with links and I want to keep them in the render? Uh, I don't understand this context. What exactly are you, you saying? If you have a Revit model with links, You can have multi-model loading in, in Viewer itself. You can have uh, linked files. Oh, let's say uh, your user wants to place one family inside the scene of one house, for instance. Is this the workflow? No, I mean, we are using one single file. What if I have a model with many linked models and I want to have my viewer showing all the parts 
with all the links. Yeah, it, it works also. Uh, it can you can address that in two ways. Uh, you can have multimodal loading. Multimodal loading is like selecting a list of uh files in in your bucket, and then placing those on top of each other, and and then if they are uh, if they are it if they share the same coordinates, they are going to make sense. The other way is by uh, uploading a zipped file with all of these links, the host and the links. You can upload mm -hmm. a zipped file and then translate it, making a reference to to the to the host design. Do you have any link where I can learn more about it and how to apply yeah. to the current scripts that we have? Yeah, sure. The the script for the tutorial day one already addresses the zipped file. Okay. Let me. So you, you just need to upload the zipped file, but if you want to do multi-model loading, uh, that is more complex. If the files are don't share the same coordinates, you need to find a way to uh, put all of those together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely can can be done inside model derivative. Uh, there are these two options here. Translate a source file, file package package as a zip file. It's pointing to STL, but it, it is the same. And also for multimodal loading, there is community lightning talks. Uh, loading multimodal multimodels in in viewer this lightning talk right here oh i hate this mm -hmm. commercials okay this guy knows everything about viewer so yeah it's a great talk thank you so much and another question so far we are creating a new revit file as output uh what if I want to make this Revit file the current one, let's say now we're being to the 60? Oh, the current version? Yes. All right, so for Bing 360s, uh, a little bit more complex uh, from design automation, right? Yeah. You need to address versioning and all of that other steps. Let me just go for documentation. If you check data management, step-by-step uh, -step tutorial, upload the files. This is the complete process of uploading a file to Bing 360. Once you find the hub and the and, and the, the project and the folder itself, you need to create the storage location. Let's say you're going to run a, a job for a file in Bing 360. You run the job and before running the work item, you need to create the storage location and then you run the job providing the, the URN that you receive for that storage location. After that, uh, design automation is automatically going to take care of the uploading parts, uploading the file and completing the upload. And then you just need to uh, create the first version if it is the, the item does not exist itself. And if it is a new version, you need to update the version of the file itself. It is never going to, uh, if you have version one, it, it, after the execution, it will be version two. It is not, never going to modify without a handle versioning, right? Okay, thank you. There is a, there is a GitHub sample addressing that. Uh, if we check, check model create issues on the web. Use an automation for Revit. Use an automation for Revit. Update family. There is a sample that updates a family. Yeah, I'll need to double check here, but there are there's a sample that updates a family from from a webhook. Okay. Let me just check here. I believe this one also updates a file. 
no this just creates a major six issue but I, I can point it to that please reach me later and i can point it to that okay. now uh ta uh can i have some time to uh show uh, open at work or do we need to close um i don't think we necessarily need to close if anyone else awesome. doesn't mind so yeah now we are we have we are on extra time so if you have to go feel free but yeah i'll just like to cover open at work through the sample it is really cool to see so if you stick around let's address that right now now it's failing download let's see why it is failing download it's always good to debug it's not intended was not intended but it's always good to debug to see how to fix a problem on the using the API. All right, this is the report from the from the last execution. It tried downloading. It tried downloading this file. Unable to download the file. Okay. Let me try once more and see if we get the same stuff, same error. Yeah, it's failing to download. So let me generate a new token. I don't believe you have one hour since we generate this one. If it fails once more. Oh, yeah, I see what it failed because there is no token here, you see? So we need to add the token. What is the name of the variable for the token? DAS API token. So let's go there. DAS, DAS API token. Uh, same here for result. We also need to specify the token. So let's just add a comma here. Now it, 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 would, it should stop failing to download the file. Let's go back. And this is the on progress call back, meaning that our job started being processed. It was grabbed by the queue. Uh, was this call back right here. This source code is also going to send us a uh, uh, a message send us uh, the material data every time it re retrieves the data. So you see, it reads uh, uh, one material, sends to our uh, URL. Reads another material, sends to URL. And it's doing that for every uh, material. Returning the external ID, category, and the quantity area and the volume. This proves that we are connecting from within the execution of the work item with one external uh, endpoint, right? And after the execution, it's going to generate uh, all of that extracted in our bucket. If we refresh here, oh no, let me, client ID. Client secret, if we refresh here, we can see our output JSON file generated, all right? Of course, this is not able to be rendered using Viewer, all right? I know it was uh, a lot. I need to change a lot of things because I was doing fast, but if you follow this uh, tutorial, where is it? If you follow this repo and have an understanding using this branch right here, you'll see one example of using the uh, open network to connect. If you have uh, another API, a third party API to connect for embodied carbon, for material cost, anything, you can connect with uh, design automation, right? How to solve bucket already exists. Uh, it means that you are trying to create a bucket that someone with the name, uh, a name that someone already uh, selected. 
So these names, they need to be globally unique across the entire platform. So just try to change that and into a name that is, you know that is globally unique. If you have trouble to do that, just grab your client ID and add it here as a prefix because your client ID is unique. So if you try your client ID dash anything, it should work because you're, you, you ensure that your name is unique. Let me share the open network. Uh, let me check your example. Uh, Jordana is Autodesk or Autodesk Forge update invent mentor family. This sample right here. Oh, I believe this one was not updated. Okay, this sample right here, it has a workflow to notify once a user updates a new version of a file, then it generates two app bundles, one for inventor to convert the inventor file, file to a family, and one from Revit to convert the, the to, to place this family into an inventor file, and then it finished created uh, finish creating a, a new version. So. It address uh, what you are asking, Jordana. And all of that is triggered automatically from uh, a user uploading a file in Bing 360. It can also work for ACC, all right? Let me copy that here. Any additional question? So that's going to be a, a homework if you have trouble uh understanding how it works just reach us everyone everyone was able to complete the work item no awesome Any other question? Any other workflow that you want? We have a lot, lots of samples, like the one with the polyline that are few to create from scratch. If not, then I would like to thank you all for the participation and for sharing this time. And you can always reach you through reach us through through email. Let me share also here the email. You can also reach with questions aps.help at autodesk.com. Uh and yeah, feel free to, to reach out, use uh Stack Overflow and participate in uh, in events. Hope to hear for you in the in the next events, accelerators and boot camps. <laughs> oh, you didn't. Wanna share a screen? Jordana? If you have time, I don't want to, to hold you if you need to leave. So. No, no worries. It's just for, for lunch. You can still okay. <laughs> so after trying to send everything again, after trying to fix what I did wrong, I'm getting I'm still getting this this issue here. Mm, status error. Yeah. Oh, I'm but right your here. file is already there, right? If you list your files in the bucket. List, list, bucket. Object, list objects in a bucket. This one. Uh, hit send there, please. Oh, you just created this one. Okay. I mean, I changed the bucket. Okay, okay, okay. So if you try the where where was the error? You created the bucket. When I try to complete, 
Uh, click on generate signed URL once more, please. Generate. Uh, task six, the second request. Get obtain signed URL. Yeah, let's try that once more. Okay, then upload the file. Put upload, yeah. Again? Yeah, the file is there. Try yes. to select once one more time, just to ensure. Send? Yeah. Status, wait for the status. 200, okay, now we can complete. Hit send. Okay, now it is good. Now it should be good to create the work item. And now send again? Yeah. Oh. oh, there is no activity. You created a new app? Mm. No, I didn't follow the last parts for the app bubble. I didn't create a new oh, app. Oh, okay. So you need to create that bundle. The activity is, if the app bundle is not created, uh, let's do like this. List your activities then, please. Oh, it is there. So I did oh. the first one, the first uh, round, but the second way it didn't do it didn't. Oh, the, the second one is, was just uh, another stuff for yeah. open at work. There was no need. Uh, okay, your activity is there. Can you can I see your work item, your post work item? Once more, task seven. Yeah. again. And go back to the list. List of activities, your AC tech, the little walls activity test, your AC tech. Oh, there is a 23. Where is this? Oh, you changed your nickname? But now it's your, not Joe. Oh, okay. So try to just copy this nickname then. It will be easier. Copy this and inside the create work item. Task seven, you have uh, two options. Either change that in the environment variable or change it uh, in, instead of the line two, DAS nickname. But, Any of these uh, two works. Environment, I'm using the, the new one because before it told the, the buckets already exist. Oh, well, there, uh, right yeah, now, but... yeah, just change the, the nickname on top of that. Go to the previous one, previous nickname. The, the bucket should be the new one. Oh, okay, got it. Can you type Ctrl Z? Because when you change the, the bucket, you don't need to change the, the nickname together. Oh, got Those it. Those are two separate stuff, two separate things. Hit save, yeah. Let's try that now. No, but the, your new, your previous nickname didn't have the eight, the twenty three, right? This was my first nickname. Oh, your your first one like this, okay. Then I changed and included the R. But now we are back to the first one. Okay, let's see the work item. Then. Yeah. Try once more. Okay, now it's pending. And you can get uh, use the next request to check the status of your work item. When it's pending, what should I expect? You just wait? Just wait because, oh, it failed to download. Because it, there is a queue for all of the processes. So mm. it, it, it is the, the last one in the, this queue once you start uh, your work item. 
it takes some time it is grabbed process it and then uh it it finishes All depending right. on the status uh let's open this report url and check uh what is the status there Uh, let's see, fail to download OSS buckets. Oh, this bucket name. Okay, uh, let's close this. We need to ensure that we're using the proper name for the bucket and for the, the nickname is okay, but let's just check the your bucket, what do you have there? There is a inside extras folder. There is a, a request to list the objects in the bucket. Yeah, right there. Uh, what's the name of the file? AC Tech Test Sanitary Test. Can you open in a small window the the report that you got? This one. Just the the no the report from Design Automation. Sorry, can you guide me? Oh, the, that text file that we got. Okay. That you downloaded. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, just move to the side, please. We we just need to compare the bucket key and the object key that he was it was trying to download. Scroll down a little bit, please. Yeah. You see when it says fail, download. Uh, scroll down a bit more. Oh, that that is good. That is good. Sorry, that is good. Scroll up a little bit. Yeah, that is good. What is the bucket name? Your AC tech. Yeah, the bucket name is correct. The object key is AC tech to generate test dot RVT. Hmm. It seems, should I send that? Should it seems I go correct. Back? Yeah, try to send one, uh, another uh, token, generate a new token and see if there's a problem, yeah, with the token. Yeah, let's right now create a work item. Task seven. Yeah, yeah, the token is there, should be good. Yeah, now check the status. Hmm, fail download once more. What could be affecting the fail? The bucket, we already checked. The nickname, maybe should I go back and check if the other tasks are with the room nickname? Um, but it, it is finished to download. If you had a problem, uh, uh, an issue with the bundle itself, it, it should fail other in other place. Not in, not in the download. There's something probably wrong with the bucket key and or bucket name. How it happened, uh, just by the way, uh, what I couldn't get at the when I got the first uh, the first issue with the URL, I came back here and I started sending for the second time. And at some point when I sent for the second time, it told me that the bucket already exists. So that's when I went there and changed the bucket. And then sending again, I got more issues. 
I, I believe the best solution will be starting over, right? Uh, let's just yes, because starting over will be a, a, a lot of steps that you already took care of. I'm just not entirely sure about this name. Can you do like this then? Let's just do a, a, a let's try, let's attempt. Uh, won't you this compare text? And compare uh the the URM that you grab grab from the the report and the URM that you are sending. And Fernando, where can I find more information on how to build a web viewer for Revit files? Fernando, uh, this is the first tutorial from our platform. If you check this tutorial, mm -hmm. uh, Fernando, the, the last link that I just sent, you'll see a, a way to build an app to build a web viewer for Revit files. Jordan, if you if you, if you compare both URNs in, in that side, they are the same, they are similar. Mm -hmm. If comparing this. Yeah, let's see this. Uh, grab one of the, the the reports from the get work item. Yeah, any of these ones. And which other? Uh, with the one from the create work item. Sorry, not the one from create and work item. With the one from list uh, objects in bucket. You see the object ID? Copy this object ID, please. Yeah, this value. And let's compare that with the uh, compare text. Uh, URL that I just sent for chat window. Oh no, but in, instead of this whole URL, just compare the, let's check the result, uh, the text file and check the, the URL that you get from the text file. You you had a one already opened. Uh, I believe it's right oh, yeah. on the left side of Zoom. That's true. But where can yeah. I get it? Uh, this one? Scroll up a little bit. Scroll it's up. One? Report URL. No, it's not the URL. It's the URN. You see the uh rabbit file. That is the URL. Rabbit file URL. Input.rbt, yeah, the yeah. value for this URL, yeah. Let's compare these two. Now I need to go back to text compare, the, the web page. Yes, I agree. Yeah, identical. Uh, whoa.
I will, I will, if you have, if you don't have anything in mind right now, I will take the recordings and do it step by step again. I will okay. there, yeah. Thank you. There's something, something strange. Yeah, I, I can figure out from there. Try that and let me know, please. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. It was an incredible mm -hmm. presentation. Bye -bye. Oh, nice. Thanks. So that's it. You know how to reach us. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. Thank you for your time.